Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. Today I am going to focus on some of these little pieces that slide on the end of the lead screw to move the table as the ram clicks back and forth. So I'm going to focus on this guy and this guy. Number 24 is going to be the first piece I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a piece of material. And we're going to do that from a solid, uh, it's going to be on a length of material. So I'll do all the work and then cut it off. It'll be a lot easier to handle. That's a very small piece. That's probably about actual size right there. All right, let's do it. After going through my inventory of square collets and split bushings, I do not have a split bushing or a collet to hold this material. Now, this is the next size up. This is 3 sixteenths. That is 1 eighth. So I'm going to make a pair of these to fit that. And if you're tuning in late to this channel, I've done this before, and I know I'm going to use this material again. So it's worth the time invested to make a couple of these. Let's do it. Okay, before I do it on, actually on the machine, I want to show you exactly what I'm going at, just so I know that you're going to understand what I'm saying. We're looking at the end of the stock here, okay? And ultimately, what you want to have when you're done is a part that's 45 degrees with a notch in it, whereby that notch is equally off-center by half the material thickness, right there. And at the very last step we're going to cut some of that surface away so there's a parting line there's a compression line for deviation in the material so how do you find this how do you get there it's really not as hard as you may think first step in the procedure is to divide that circle in half with your cutter as your cutter is milling away at this thing and you come down and you have your dimension the re remaining material you now have a zero on that material that goes across the center Center being right there. It is this side of the cutter. This is your working side of the cutter, right here. You know how far apart this is, so that's a good thing. Zero out your dials, zero out your digital right now. Since I did mine in a rotary indexer, the next step was super easy. I'm going to put this back in there. Let's do that red dot again so it would keep up. That is the center. The part is positioned this way. Once you rotate this 45 degrees, you can see how this X will be easy to hit. You just move over accordingly because the cutter is already over the theoretical center point. Now, if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you could establish another flat up here somewhere on useless material and do the exact same thing for the height. But in the demonstration, I'm gonna orient it completely flat and register the tool against this surface here. This will then be my Z zero. So when the part is reoriented accordingly, I can raise the table or lower the cutter and go back to my original zero from when I split the part in half and move over. And when I do, I will have exactly what I'm looking for. Then orient the part. Vertically for the final operation, take a few thousandths off of this right here, and that way you have two identical pieces that when they come together, there should be a parting line, should be, and you got it. It's not as hard as it looks, and establishing that dimension first and holding that dimension tight, make sure you set your zero, everything else should fall in relatively quick. All right, let's go over the machine, actually cut some material, and see if it makes any sense when you see it.
let's explain what you just watched. The initial split divided the solid diameter directly in half. Directly in half. That gave me the zero position for the vertical wall right now set at 45. I just moved in half the stock diameter. When I had the part oriented at 90 degrees and you saw me locate the tool on top, that gave me my Z height for back to the 45 for this bottom edge right here, this bottom plane. So now that I knew the size of the material, I would move half the material down and half the material over to establish that V. Final operation was returned back to zero. The ten thousandths was taken off of this face to give me a parting line and compression room for material that deviates from nominal. I'll do the exact same thing to the other side and then we'll finish this piece in the lathe. If all went well, you now have a blank that looks like this. The orientation end-to-end -end clocking means nothing. I'm going to put this in another half-inch collet back in the lathe, and I'm going to part it off, and we're going to have a split bushing with a square feature in the center. Let's do it. going to deburr a little bit before I use it, but there you go. Half an hour well spent. If you want to get a feel for how the part sits in the nest, take a real superficial cut across the flats and look for it to clean up across all four points. You could also turn a diameter on it and see if the diameter is tangent to all the flats. Let's do that. You can see a remnant line right there from the original stock. Right there as well. You can't even feel the transition between the diameter and the material here. Or here, that is very close. I am pleased with the result. It was worth the time. If you don't have a square collet, make one. Not a big problem.